Ladies and ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to really thank uh, the Director General Young for his kind invitation to the European Commission President von der Leyen to speak actually here today, but she's unable to attend, so I'm sorry for that, but you have to do with me. But she asked me to restate on her behalf the EU's commitment to the European Green Deal, and in particular to one of its major components, essential components, which is the circular economy transition. And it was already said that uh, in the 2019's global resource outlook, the UN's International Resource Panel estimated that 90% of the impacts on biodiversity and water, so roughly half of, European, of the EU greenhouse gas emissions and one third of the impacts on human health are all linked with the extraction and processing of material resources. So be it biomass or food, minerals, metals, or fossil fuels. So solving the climate, biodiversity, and pollution crisis, therefore requires that we take lessons from nature and using what we take much more efficiently, keeping it longer in use and giving it back in a safe and sound manner. And that's basically circular economy. And that's where uh, we want to use resources much more efficiently because we believe that is the only future for Europe, but also for the planet. Because we think if we want to keep the humanity's footprint within a safe operating space, we need to go circular, especially on the use of our very precious natural resources. Now, going circular makes actually also sense, not only from an environmental point of view, this is of course the main driving uh, force, but also econo economically, but also I think socially. Um, just to look at the European Union, we want to share a bit today some of our ideas and our experiences. We also just starting on this, but between 2012 and 18, the number of direct jobs linked to circular economy grew already by 5%, reached around 4 million within the EU, but it's where we only started. So we hope for a much bigger effect later. Because when you go on circular economy, uh, it is also ensuring a sustainable transition. It means predictability. And that responds to the business needs because they want to have price stability, secure access to raw materials. And it makes also business more resilient against the consequences of climate change think about the access uh, to water. Now, therefore, we are convinced that we need to move away from a linear model towards a circular model. But this is a very long haul operation. It really requires a lot of stamina, vision, and also regulatory certainty and sufficient investment. And we have adopted, uh, in order to give that uh, regulatory certainty, a circular economic uh, action plan last year, it was already our second. And what we are now looking at is how to make our model work to go from a reduction of consumption uh, and uh, to really double the circular material use that we want to have. So how do we do this in Europe? We uh, have basically four ideas. The first is we want to transform the way we design products from the very start. It means we make uh, or we want to make uh, circular products the norm. That means reducing waste, minimalizing their environmental impacts throughout the entire life cycle. And that's what we would call in our regulatory framework, the sustainable product initiative. And the second way is to empower consumers because consumers need to receive trustworthy and relevant information on the circularity and repairability of a product. And therefore, we are working also in a regulatory framework on a new idea of a right to repair, also right to have spare parts and so on. And we are considering really very much further strengthening the consumer's protection against greenwashing or premature obsolences of products. Now, a third area in which we are focusing action is, as I said already, we look at the entire value uh, chain. And we identified a seven value change with very high potential for circularity. This would be for things, electronics, batteries, uh, packaging, textile, just to name a few. And therefore we will come forward with specific product or value chain proposals. Now, and finally, obviously the first idea of actually we should, I should have mentioned at the beginning is to reduce waste. We reduce waste in the first place because 
And that's where we're also looking at uh, uh, creating targets uh, for waste reduction and to create a, a circularity also of waste. And that brings me also to something which is equally important. We have to reduce exports of waste in third countries. And in particular, if, it, we, if we were to talk about hazardous waste, and this is where we have to say Mirko, but we have to act on that. And this is where the revision of uh, the waste shipment regulation will uh, come into place. And we will look at that indeed in order to um, really reduce any harmful environmental or health impacts in third countries. I think that's absolutely what we have to do. Now, we can't do this alone. We also have to look obviously at the international scene and that's where we come to uh, especially the well-coordinated action at the international front and around, around the world we see, and we have just listened to, to, to you both uh, before me, but uh, we will all want to build back better and greener and there, uh, there is really an uptake of this idea of circularity. And we are really happy to see that many countries across the world are joining forces now to promote circular economy, including through the joint approach that we call the Global Alliance on Circular Economy and Resource Efficiency, which was launched in February in the margins of the fifth session of the United Nations Environmental Assembly. And we are very, very proud and happy that we have teamed up, we were able to team up with UNEP and UNIDO, but also with 12 other countries in setting up the alliance. And this alliance will help to say, uh, to identify barriers, uh, but also share knowledge uh, and uh, governments gaps and help us all how to go through this circular economy. And we have to really point out that these um, alliances are building on existing alliance already deployed elsewhere especially the African Circular Economy Alliance and the recently launched Circular Economy Coalition of Latin America and the Caribbean. So we're very grateful to UNIDO who have accepted uh, to join the EU and UNEP on this journey. And we really look forward to get uh, many more on board. We also had, of course, uh, have this end of the year, the Biodiversity uh, COP15, where I think we also will have to really look at circular economy and biodiversity. They are all interlinked. There are good uh, um, synergies possible. And obviously we have the Leaders Pledge for Nature, which also provides a very clear roadmap to hold biodiversity loss. And we hope that much, many more countries will come on board. So in conclusion, I think we all know that at the moment we had uh, COVID and we have COVID and it's creating havoc across all economies and societies. And despite that, we think this is now the best moment to embark on a process of rebuilding in a different way, to change direction and really embark on a path towards a sustainable, climate neutral and resource efficient model. We really have to um, um, embark on it now if we want to address the three most pressing crises of our time, which is climate change, biodiversity loss and pollution. And it's a positive agenda full of benefits for the economy but also for the environment and for the global citizens. So it means also a just and a more inclusive change. So I very much look forward to le learning today and tomorrow about the best practices, emerging uh, innovations over the coming days, and also to read the policy and technical recommendations that will come out. Uh, and we very much look forward to cooperate. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.